Well, hey, everybody, it's me, Mitch. As promised, today I want to talk about allulose. Allulose, an artificial sweetener, supposedly unlike any other artificial sweetener we've ever seen, going to change our lives because It's supposed to do the same thing as Ozempic does. And I mean, if there was ever anything that any company, virtually anybody, could capitalize on, it would be come up with a product that you could sell to a Addicted people that you can say has the benefits and actually replaces the need for a hugely expensive injection of a drug like Ozempic. If you were a manufacturer, let's say you were a company making all these keto treats. Would you jump on the bandwagon? Well, the word is yes, and jump they have. Rx Sugar sent me samples to my office, and here's why I'm probably not keeping them in my office, but you might want to. Let's begin by saying why I'm so excited about what allulose and this company, Rx Sugar, has to do with the landscape of sugar substitute options. That was uh, Dr. Annette Bosworth, or Dr. Boz, from a recent video about allulose. And uh, I'll put a link to that video in the description. And I would absolutely suggest, almost insist, that if you really want to try to get to the heart of the point I'm trying to make here, it's important for you to watch that video and then re-watch mine. Second video I want you to watch is another recent video from Nicholas Norwitz. Hey everyone, I want to go over a paper that was published in 2018, but I think is particularly pertinent now because it blends two topics that seem to be consistently sexy and provocative right now with respect to obesity and nutrition. Those two topics are GLP-1 and non nutritive sweeteners. Dr. Bosworth mentioned a company called RX Sugar. And as far as artificially sweetened things go, I would imagine that their products are as good or better, better than most. But I took a look into them, and what I found was that the ingredients lists on some of these things kind of resemble, except for the sweetener used, all of the other so-called keto-friendly snacks that are out there. And while I don't think that the allulose itself is going to be harmful, or for that matter, even beneficial in the small in the small doses of it you'd get unless you're eating enormous amounts of this stuff. I do think that the propensity to binge caused by our addictions and eat way too much of this stuff, thereby getting big doses of all of these other ingredients from seed oils and plants and things like that that we don't want and other sugars I think that these are a recipe for disaster like any other one of these foods that trigger our addiction through the mechanisms of the sweet taste and will definitely, definitely sabotage any efforts, any efforts that we have made and any gains up to that point. So let's see what that's all about. I'm going to Google RX Sugar right now, and I see a lot of products up there, 
RX sugar, organic allulose liquid sugar. They've got uh, candy bars, chocolate swealthy snacks, keto certified candy snack. They've got organic pancake syrup. They've got all these different products. Let's go to their website and see what it looks like. Well, there's a range of their products and a 10% off coupon. How about that? And let's take a look, for example, at these, uh, at these bars. And they have all these different flavors. Let's look at the, uh, at the chocolate swealthy snacks bars. Okay, so let's take a look at this. And it, and it comes up here and it says, zero net carbs, zero sugar alcohols, zero stevia, zero monk, monk fruit, zero erythritol, non-GMO, keto certified, FODMAP certified, blood sugar friendly, and it may be all of those things, but it tastes sweet. It tastes sweet. It's, it's a small bar. You sell them at Walmart. I'm sure they got a lot of great reviews of people saying how good it is. They cost $13 for 12 bars. I mean, for eight bars. So that's a buck and a half a bar. And these bars are one ounce, are one ounce a piece. Let's take a look at the label here. And we'll blow it up and we'll see. It has 80 calories, has three grams of saturated fat, no cholesterol, 60 milligrams of sodium. It does have 18 grams of carbohydrate. You know, this is sounding like those ice cream bars I talked about a few weeks ago. Eight grams of fiber, no added sugars, and three grams of protein. Ingredients, dark chocolate, allulose, choc chocolate, cocoa butter, cocoa powder, sunflower lecithin, solu soluble tapioca fiber, more allulose, more cocoa butter, proprietary vegan protein, <laughs> pea, pumpkin, sunflower, or flaxseed. I don't know, guys. Maybe these things are the world's healthiest sweet food. Maybe. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say the allulose does have some benefits of triggering GLP-1 agonists. Yes. The foods made with allulose might be just a tiny little bit better than their counterparts made with other artificial sweeteners, but the rest of the stuff they put in these foods is the same. It's the same. And whether the food itself is harmful to you. Yeah, anytime you have chocolates, you're going to have oxalates. Should we really be eating all this plant protein? Why not eat animal protein? All of this discussion pales in comparison to the real problem with these things. And that is, since a sweet taste triggers your addiction, I don't care where that sweet taste came from. If you had a box of 12 of these things, more than likely, you would eat the entire box. They're one ounce a piece if, after all. This is what happened to me with Atkins bars or any other one of these supposedly healthy, low sugar, artificially sweetened snacks. We're addicts, we're addicts. The only way that I have ever cured, and I say cured my addiction was to never ever, never let anything that tastes sweet touch my tongue again. Not even toothpaste or mouthwash. The last of my sweet tasting things wasn't bad for me. It was an electrolyte drink, but it was sweetened with stevia. Even that little sweet taste triggered my addiction. 
we don't realize how easily our addictions are triggered. They can be triggered by just looking at a picture of something. Why do you think the packaging on these foods, why do they put so much money and time and photography into making that food irresistible? So the bottom line for me is if you're not a carbohydrate addict, if you can open some cookies, eat one and put them away and forget that they're there, if you're one of the 10 or 20% of people in this country who are not addicted to sugar, surround yourself with it. You probably won't want to eat it anyway. Doesn't it make you mad when you hear about these people that say, I just don't really like to eat sugar. And you go, Christ, I'd kill to be like that. Well, you don't want to be like that. And they don't want to be like you gorging themselves on something that's so, so unhealthy. That's the main thing to look at. All the rest of it is just window dressing around the main event. And that is as a carbohydrate addict, it doesn't matter whether what's giving you the sweet taste is good for you, bad for you, makes no difference. It's a minor point. The major point is it will trigger your addictions. It will cause you to have cravings. It will cause you to binge. It will sabotage any efforts you've been making over no matter how long to get healthy, lose weight. Is it worth it? Don't buy into it. The hype, the advertising, the dancing fat people singing its praises are going to be descending on us in huge, huge amounts. And most of us are not going to have the willpower to even resist the message. And here we go again, just another way that their propaganda dictates our actions. I could have probably summed this entire video up with one word. Don't. Take the rest of the day off and eat meat.